Hey everyone, and down to popular demand, I decided to do a comparison between the ESP8266 Node MCU versus the Pi Pico. So the board I've got on the left here is the ESP Node MCU by Amica. And on the right, we've got the Raspberry Pi Pico by Raspberry Pi. So from a first glance, if we look at the size, they're similar in length the Pi being slightly longer but then again it's got more pins so it would be they both have holes for when you want to attach them to your assembly they both use the USB micro similar depth as well and the width the ESP is slightly longer so starting with the specs we'll go with the ESP first it's around $8, but you can get it cheaper if you buy it in bulk or from uh, third parties if you want to get a cheaper Chinese version. It's a 32-bit ESP8266 microcontroller, operating voltage of 3.3 volts, a clock speed of 80 megahertz, four megabytes of flash memory, 64 kilobytes of SRAM, 16 GPIOs, one SPI, one I2C, one UART, one ADC, and four PWM. Uh, it's only got one analog, so that's the pin there. So that's the ADC. Moving on to the Raspberry Pi. We, it's a $4 board. It's the RP2040 microcontroller, so that's a 32-bit dual core ARM Cortex M0 Plus processor, operating voltage of 3.3 volts, a flexible clock speed up to 133 MHz, two megabytes of onboard flash memory, 264 kilobytes of SRAM, 26 GPIO pins, two SPI, two ITC, two UART, three 12-bit ADC, 16 PWM, an accurate clock and timer on chip, so that's on the chip there, and a temperature sensor. So what can we get from this? The This board is probably better if you want to do anything with Wi-Fi or Internet of Things, although it's only got one analog input pin, which is a bit of a shame, because if you have multiple inputs or readings you want to take, which need analog, then this isn't really a board because you're going to need to get an extra module to convert those. Um, this board, however, has more SPI, ITC and UARTs and more analog as well, which makes it a bit better on those sides. More PWM as well, but then it hasn't got any Wi-Fi. So if you're doing an Internet of Things sort of project, I wouldn't suggest this one. It all depends on the project you're doing, to be honest. Um, but it has got an accurate clock built in, which is very useful. The power usage, however, this one has a deep sleep mode or three different sleep modes. You've got the modem off, so it's not using the Wi-Fi. You've got a light sleep and then deep sleep. Um, deep sleep only uses 20 microamps, which is really nothing, to be honest. Um, very good on battery power for the uh, this one is a bit higher though, it doesn't have a, as much powerful deep sleep, so it's not as good on battery power. They both work on 3.3 volts, so if you're going to be using any sort of interaction with other modules, um, you're going to need either a level shifter, so all the SPI and ITCs for example are going to the 5 volts. Um, unless the board, of course, your module you're using is 3.3 volts also, which is useful. You can power them both by the USB. They both have an onboard um, voltage uh, modulator. So here's one there, and the other one is somewhere, I think it's this chip. Might be that one. Um, so they're quite useful. Uh, I would my personal favourite is this one, I've used it more often than this, um, but yeah. The last thing to mention is the software it uses. So this one I use with I, uh, the Arduino IDE, so that's a C 
C++ sort of language. This one can work with C++ or MicroPython. Um, I've only ever used it with MicroPython so far and found it quite easy to pick up, especially if you're going from Raspberry Pi. It's quite simple. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video between these two boards. Personally, I prefer the ESP because I do a lot of Wi-Fi. Love to hear what you guys think is your favorite board in the comments below. Also comment any projects you would like to see me doing. Uh, I'll definitely have a go at looking at those. Uh, for more tutorials and videos, check out my channel here. For comparison between the Pi Pico and the Nano, you can check that out here. And if you also check out my Instagram, you'll find loads of videos and pictures of what I'm going and currently working on. So please check that out. See you guys soon.